Hey everyone, welcome back to the Noonan Block Repair. We're hopping on now where Ryan is pulling the engine block out of the machine. We've come through and re-machined the oil pan rail and some of the registers for the main caps to try and get everything back into spec. It's pretty amazing. If you look on the outside of the block, we'll show you here shortly, you can't even tell from the outside looking in that this thing had ever been windowed. Ryan does a fantastic job. Part of this, when I'm talking about dropping the main registers, when this thing blew up, a block is gonna naturally bow. When we're bringing everything back into spec, we're gonna drop those registers down so we can re-line bore of the main tunnel. So once it's out, we're gonna take everything back to Zach's area. Some of the, the small spot and areas that are hard to get to with the machine, Zach's gonna hand sand those while he's gonna use a sander. He's gonna come in there and do all that manually. We found that you could do it on the CNC machine, but the time that you're gonna sit there programming it, sometimes it's just better to do some things by hand. The oil pan rail, you'll see it's proud. We're gonna come in with a sanding block and actually lap that down flat. We'll blend it in with the rest of the pan rail. And then Zach's gonna come in with the sanding belt, little small sanding belt that we have, and put that nice chamfer back in, lead that edge back into the crankcase of the block, going back up towards where the sleeve would be. Another common question is why don't we just mis mill the oil pan rail flat? Again, can do. A lot of times it's better for us to do some things by hand. A CNC machine is a great tool, but it's also a tool that you have to use with caution. Sometimes if you come in and do that, you've dropped one pan rail too far, then you've got to do the other one, and then you end up in a mess. So sometimes it's better to do some of this stuff by hand. And you know, we, we prefer to take a quality approach rather than a, a time and just an approach of not giving the customer the best part that we can. Next, once he's got everything ground the way that he wants, we're gonna start getting ready to put it back in the machine and do a line bore pass on it. So we're gonna take the main caps, clean those, put some white lithium grease on the side of them to where we'll go to install them back in the block. They don't have any kind of seizing or anything like that going on. Because remember, those are fresh main registers that we've just cut in this thing. He's gonna ins install the main studs. We do this by hand, especially on a repair block. We're using the customer studs here to make sure that everything is accurate. These studs need to be oiled constantly. They're always something that we take incredible attention with. And when you're going to actually put caps on a block, it seems very simple. But when you think about it, if you just have one little chip or one little piece of material sitting underneath that main cap, it's gonna throw your whole line bore off. So we're very, very critical as far as making sure everything is clean, making sure all of our surfaces are lubricated. And when we knock the caps down, they are fully seated. Zach's using his trademark double hammer technique. The reason he's doing that is you can actually bang your hand if you try to just do one. Now, once we've got the caps on, we're gonna bring it in the CNC machine. We're gonna run a clock across the, the deck face, make sure we have everything straight, all of our axes and everything lined up correctly for the program. And then Ryan is gonna come in and start taking measurements off of the main tunnel. And you'll see here, we've gone to where the caps have actually been removed. What Ryan found was even when we dropped the main register down some, the block was showing us that the caps need to be linished to be able to undersize that main tunnel even more. That way, when we come back in and bore it, everything is uh, as fresh of a surface as it could be. So. We pop the caps back on, linish those real quick. They're coming back on here shortly. Torque everything back up. And start rock and roll with the line boring process. All right, once Ryan's worked his magic in the machine, it's out, mains look good. Um, we've got everything looking fresh. We are going to start working on the cam bearings. So actually on this block where it slung a rod, it actually damaged the cam bearing. If you remember on the earlier episode, there was a hole in the top of the cam tunnel. On that piece of metal's way out, it damaged the number four cam bearing. 
So what Zach is gonna actually do here is remove the damaged cam bearing. We always do all of our cam bearing work last. He's gonna punch the retaining pins out that will allow him to remove the cam bearings. You'll see that little pin dropping out from the bottom. And what he's actually gonna do is the number five cam bearing was in fantastic shape. So we're actually gonna remove the number four, slide number five into the number four position, and we're gonna install a new cam bearing at the end. So you'll see him knocking the, the bad number four out. He's gonna be able to get it through the bottom of the cam tunnel, retrieve it that way. And then we're gonna slide the number five cam bearing forward, get it into position to where it's happy. So we got a line this hole. It was in fantastic shape. No need for a customer to pay for, uh, for another cam bearing that they don't need. So we'll line up the oil hole, which also serves as the locating hole. That's where our pins that you saw us knocking out earlier will register the cam bearing and keep it from spinning when this engine's turning. Uh, this is a funny car engine, so I mean, it's gonna see over 10,000 RPM. It's gonna see some pretty insane loads. We're gonna make sure this thing's pinned in correctly and registered well. Once he's knocked his pins in, he's gonna use his mirror to come in and inspect to make sure that the pin is not protruding over the surface of the cam bearing, make sure everything's happy. We'll do a quick glance through here. You'll see the cam tunnel's been repaired. Cam bearings are happy. Time to put in the last, but not least, number five. Drilling the last bearing, making sure the oil hole is happy. He's gonna deburr it real quick, drop it in, same process. We have to do this with our new cam bearings. Register it, it's good to go. Looking at um, installing these pins in the main tunnel, this is something that is actually pretty scary to do in person because you don't want to damage that main tunnel. Once our cam bearings are in, so we're gonna wash everything, uh, get it prepped to go in the oven, make sure there's no oil or coolant or anything like that, like that on the block. Uh, you don't want it to stain when it goes in the oven to get the sleeves on. Get everything fixtured and uh, get our oven pre-warmed. Slide this bad puppy in and it's time to let Zach do some of his sleeving magic. You guys see that all the time on uh, Instagram. It's uh, kind of mesmerizing to watch sleeves go in. You think about 4,000, 3,000 horsepower block. These sleeves just slide, slide in like butter. The reason they do that is Zach's doing all of his prep work correctly. So he's deburring all of the edges at the bottom. He's making sure everything's clean. Got everything set to the side, ready to roll. You gotta remember, when you're sleeving a engine block, it is a very quick process. That block will cool, and once it starts cooling, you really have to hustle getting sleeves in. So it's something that you have to be extremely patient with, but work at a fast pace, because you do not want to mess this up, get a sleeve stuck or anything like that. Zach's doing a great job. He's got one bank in, rotate it over. Get all your dowel pins back in. Those help locate the sleeves into the engine block and then slide the last four in. Job done. She's ready to go to the home. We just got to let her cool off. The block is hot. One of our most loved and hated machines in the shop, the cylinder home. It is a fantastic machine, does a great job. She is a little bit old in age, but she treats us very well. We're gonna come in, start with one sleeve, dial, creep up on the size that we want and all of the finishes that we want. 
um, to accommodate the ring package and stuff that we know this customer's running. We're gonna drop everything in, make sure everything's happy, and then from there, this Rottler hone actually will keep the same setup and finish bore size through, throughout each hole. We just have to manually put it there. Once this thing's honed, it's time to double check everything, make sure the cross hatch angles, all the specs that we want, we're happy with those. Once the cylinder hone is complete, we're going to check all of the lifter bores, make sure they they have adequate clearance and fitment to the lifters, a gauge set of lifters we have here at the shop. We'll hone those if necessary. This one needs a couple of holes honed, but Zach blasted through that so fast we couldn't see it. All right, time for the final wash. So we've washed this block now. It would be at least three times. Uh, Zach may have done it more. Washing an engine block does not sound as critical as, as it actually is. When we go to wash a block, you'll see him pulling it out of a dunk tank, which we always fully submerge a block when we wash it to get as much as we can out of all the oil galleys. Once we come into the sink, yes, we still use a sink with a guard hose, and we actually use Dawn dish detergent. The reason we do that, we're going to wash it by hand, it is a great opportunity for us to second check any kind of burrs, edges, there's no telling how many times we have found stuff in the wash. We like doing this by hand as part of our process. However, it is very tricky. When you see these sleeves, they're finished honed and we have to wash this block off, the sleeve material that are in these blocks will flash rust extremely fast. So you have to keep everything wet and then immediately blow it off, WD-40 it, and then get in a box and ready to ship. All right, guys, it's gonna wrap up this block repair. You know, we're, we're excited to have stuff like this come in. It's always a unique challenge. This application in specific is a funny car, alcohol funny car. So these things see some of the most extreme conditions. It's some of the toughest class of racing that we're involved in. You know, so we're, we're excited when those guys run well. Unfortunately, repairs are a part of this business. This one was uh, pretty severe, as you guys saw in all the videos. Windows in the block, hole in the cam tunnel. Uh, getting the main tunnel back straight, fixing the cam bearings. I mean, there was a lot involved in repairing this block. We're, we're excited to get this thing back to the customer. It's in tip-top shape. These guys are actually on a span of five weekends in a row racing. So they're gonna put this as a short block together, put it in the trailer and have it ready to go, along with a spare set of heads. That way they're able to navigate any kind of challenges that they have on the road. But um, thank you guys for tuning in and staying a part of this. We're, uh, we're gonna try and track some more of these repairs as they come through. It's the end of the year. We're gonna see some stuff tear up as part of our business and uh, we'll take you along for the journey. So thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned.